I am going shopping at the Dollar Tree, but I'm staying out of the Crafter Square section on this trip. I'm looking around the store for unconventional items that I can turn into pumpkin decor for fall. Hey everyone, thanks for coming to hang out with me today. My name's Jess and I love crafting for fall. If you do too, then let's get started. I headed over to the kitchen section and I grabbed a pack of these flexible cutting mats that they have at the Dollar Tree. I was inspired to make this pumpkin by all of the canning ring pumpkins that I've been seeing on Pinterest lately. Instead of using canning rings for this pumpkin, I decided to create rings out of the chopping mat. I laid my chopping mat down on top of my cutting mat and I started by using a light colored Sharpie and just going the whole way across and I marked off one inch sections. I used a light colored Sharpie because I wanted to make sure that you couldn't actually see the ink through anything. It's really hard to see on camera, but it was easier for me to see in person. Once I had the lines marked the whole way across on my chopping mat, I just used a regular pair of scissors to cut each of the strips. I grabbed a roll of this buffalo plaid fabric that I had found at the Dollar Tree a while ago. They always have different patterns of fabric there. I just happen to already have these in my stash. I cut a small slit on the one side about an inch over and then I just tore the fabric because I like that rough edge on fabric. If that's not something that you care for, obviously you could just cut the strips with scissors or with a rotary cutter. But like I said, I didn't mind having the frayed edges on my strips. By the way, I had cut 14 total strips from the chopping mat, so when I was tearing my fabric, I made sure that I tore 14 of the buffalo plaid strips. And you can see, I added a little hot glue to the top of one of the chopping mat strips, and then I just started wrapping the buffalo plaid material on a diagonal until I got to the end of the material strip, and then I secured it with some hot glue at the bottom. Now don't worry if you have a little chopping mat hanging out on either end, because I am going to cover that up later. To form the ring, I just used more hot glue and I hot glued both ends of the chopping mat together. I secured it with one of the craft clips from the Dollar Tree just to make sure that that glue really had a chance to set before I took the clip off. I repeated those same steps with the rest of the chopping mat pieces, wrapping my material on a diagonal down the plastic chopping mat and then gluing the two ends together to form a ring. Here's an example of a ring where you could still see some of the plastic chopping mat because the fabric wasn't quite long enough to cover the whole thing. In that case, all I did was after the glue had set to form the ring, I took an extra stri strip of fabric and I wrapped it around the part where you could still see the plastic. And because of the pattern on this material, it just blended right in. You couldn't tell the difference between where I had started and where I finished. Once all of my rings were ready, I took a piece of jute twine and I just started stringing all of the rings onto the jute twine. Once they were all lined up on there, I just tied the two ends together and spaced the rings out as evenly as I could. When I liked the shape of the pumpkin that I had created out of the rings, I used my hot glue to secure everything in place. This is a little tough to do because I didn't want to fidget with it too much, so I just ran a big bead of hot glue all around the circumference of the bottom of the pumpkin and I just walked away. I let that glue set up before I moved on to any other step. Now I got to the fun part. I have this big bag of pieces of greenery that I've been collecting over the years. So I grabbed out some of my favorite pieces of leaves and little branches and I just started decorating the top of the pumpkin the way I liked it. And I also had a bag of these stems from the Dollar Tree that I thought would make a perfect stem for my pumpkin. So after I had some of the greenery in place, then I picked out a stem and I added that to the center. I was still worried about those rings shifting around. So as a final step, I took a piece of chipboard, I cut a small circle out, I added a bunch of hot glue to it, and I just set my pumpkin down on top of it. That way you couldn't see it, but it just gave it a little more security to hold its shape.
one item all of us crafters who love the Dollar Tree seem to collect are these tumbling tower block games that they have. These are their version of the Jenga blocks. They're much smaller than the actual Jenga game, but they come in really handy for a lot of craft projects. Now, I will say, I did not come up with creating a pumpkin for this video on my own. There's a ton of different ways to make pumpkins out of Jenga blocks if you look on different YouTube videos and different Pinterest posts. So this is not my original idea, but I don't know who actually came up with it in the first place. But there's a ton of different ways to make it. This is just how I decided to make mine. I started by creating a bundle of four blocks. You can see I glued two end on end with each other and then another set of two and then I stacked those two sets of two on top of each other to create kind of just a bigger version of the tumbling tower block. I created eight bundles all together so if you decide to recreate this you'll need 32 of the tumbling tower blocks. I need to glue three of the bundles together to form one side of the pumpkin but they have to be staggered so I laid one of the bundles down and I glued the next one on top of it about halfway down and I made sure that the blocks were facing in the same direction and then I took the third one and I repeated that on the opposite side and I lined it up as best as I could with the block on the other side of the center if that makes any sense so you can see that there's two blocks they kind of look like a mini staircase that goes right up and right down again but like I said I wanted to make sure that all of the blocks were facing in the same direction and then I repeated that same process with three more of the blocks, just making sure that I had them staggered out so that the top block was about halfway up the two bottom blocks. The last two bundles I created are gonna create the ends of the pumpkins to form a circle. So after I had both halves of the pumpkin complete, I took one of the bundles and I glued it onto one side of the half and I made sure that I staggered it up again so that it would kind of round out that side. And then I repeated that with the last bundle on the opposite side. I hot glued it on, staggering it up, and once that shape was formed, then I could just take some hot glue and glue on the other side of of the pumpkin. I also did that same technique with just single Jenga blocks to create a miniature version of the same pumpkin. For my bigger pumpkin, I decided to keep it traditional and just paint it orange. And then for the smaller pumpkin, I decided to paint that one white. I like the distressed rustic look so I decided to go back through with some of the mineral color by Waverly and I just dry brushed it over both the white and the orange pumpkins. But after I painted the orange pumpkin that seam between the two sets of blocks would blend together but I still wasn't crazy about how much I could still see it so that's when I decided just to take some jute twine, wrap it around the center and finish it off with a bow. I hot glued some of the wooden stem pieces from the Dollar Tree to the center of my pumpkins to create the pumpkin stems and then of course I got to town decorating with leaves and little branches and I also had some of this berry garland in my stash that I wrapped around a pencil to create a little corkscrew and I added that in as well. I headed over to the toy section and I started looking through all of the puzzles that I had. I grabbed one and I got to work on my next pumpkin craft. To create a base for my pumpkin shape, I grabbed this large container of Mod Podge and I traced around it. I shifted it over to one side, traced again, and shifted it to the other side and traced it one more time. And that gave me my basic pumpkin shape. It didn't need to be perfect. I just needed to have a, a little idea of how big my pumpkin should be. I cut it out with scissors and then I opened up my puzzle to find out that those puzzle pieces were much smaller than I expected. I mean, look how tiny these pieces are. How are kids supposed to put this puzzle together? At this point, I almost gave up and decided to skip on to another craft, but then I thought, no, you know what? I'm going to try to make this work. <laughs> so I took out all my tiny little puzzle pieces. I started flipping them over so that the cardboard was facing up. And using my hot glue, I went in small sections and I would lay a bead of hot glue down on my pumpkin shape, glue a couple pieces down, and I did the perimeter first and I got 
got all the pieces in place around the perimeter. Then I went back through and started filling in the center. In the end, the tiny little puzzle pieces actually did make for a cute pumpkin, but it did take a while and it was kind of frustrating because those pieces were so small. I felt sometimes like I needed tweezers to pick them up. So I guess if you want to recreate this craft, you could go for the tiny pieces or just look for a puzzle that has regular size pieces and this will probably go a lot faster for you. Here's my finished pumpkin base and I wanted to show you this is one of the new glue gun pads from the Dollar Tree and you can see I put hot glue on it and it peeled right off so it actually did a really good job it's a great deal for a dollar twenty-five I really wanted to get into the nooks and crannies of these puzzle pieces to make sure that they all got covered with paint so rather than brushing over the tops of the puzzle pieces with my paintbrush you can see I'm dipping it in the paint dabbing off a little excess and then going up and down on top of the puzzle pieces and then sometimes I would shift my brush and go in at an angle just to make sure that I had all of the edges covered and you couldn't see any of that cardboard coming through. For the stem of this pumpkin I decided to keep it simple. I took a scrap piece of chipboard and I just cut out a basic stem shape. I didn't use a pattern or anything. Once I had the shape how I liked it, then I used some thicker jute cord and starting at the bottom with some hot glue, I just started wrapping it up until I got to the top and everything was secured in place. I wanted to add my pumpkin to a frame, so I started with the pumpkin stem. I hot glued that down first, and because that is a little bulky, I knew I needed some spacers for the back of my pumpkin. I took some scrap pieces of chipboard, I hot glued three layers together, and I created two pieces like that and I hot glued those to the back of the pumpkin. You could also do this with craft sticks. You could glue a couple craft sticks together just to elevate the pumpkin so that whenever you glue it on top of the stem, it doesn't bow out or it doesn't stick up funny off of the frame. Kept the decorating simple for this pumpkin. I added in a leaf and I created a small bow out of some ribbon that I had from the Dollar Tree and hot glued that onto one side. Let me know in the comments, do you think if you recreated this, you would use these tiny puzzle pieces again or would you stick with the regular size pieces? I have two more pumpkins to show you but if you like this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you're on social media I am on Instagram at glulala so you can follow me over there. Okay back to crafting. I'm always impressed with the picture frame selection they have at the Dollar Tree and you can grab some of these frames and use them for things besides showing off your photos. I grabbed two frames that I liked and I'm also using some of these super jumbo craft sticks that I get at Walmart. I already took the insides out of the frames and I'm removing the prongs from the back side as well. Depending on what frames you choose will decide how many sticks you'll need for your pumpkin. For my frames I lined up seven sticks on the the inside of my frames and I left a small gap in between each of the sticks and you can see that the sticks are just a tad too long for this frame so I just cut a little excess off of one end of each of the sticks. Originally I wanted to paint my sticks with the elephant color but unfortunately mine was just about empty and I didn't have enough to paint all 14 sticks so instead I took the mineral color I added just a dot of the ink color and I mixed this together and the gray was a little darker than the elephant color but it did the trick. I'm also adding that same color to four of the tumbling tower blocks. To make the frames and the sticks more cohesive, I decided to take that same paint mixture and I did a heavy dry brushing over both of my frames. Once all my gray paint was dry, I took the plaster color by Waverly and I did a heavy dry brushing on all of the pieces. So I dry brushed over the sticks, the Jenga blocks, and the two picture frames. After the paint was dry, I started laying my sticks back down onto the picture frame. So this is the back side of the picture frame you're seeing here and I always like to start by gluing the bottom stick in place first, then I flip over and I glue the top stick in. And then I just go back and forth. I glue the bottom one, then I go back to the top, and then that way I can kind of judge how the spacing needs to be as I'm laying them out. So if I need to adjust the spacing, I can do that and it'll look pretty even as I make my way from one side to the next. And I did that on the back side of both of my frames. 
After all my sticks were in place, I took the tumbling tower blocks and I hot glued one into each corner of the bottom picture frame. Once those were all in place, then I added more hot glue to the tops of the tumbling tower blocks and I laid the second frame down on top. For the stem of this pumpkin, I took a piece of dark brown felt out of my stash. I cut a strip about three inches wide. I hot glued down a piece of an old floral stem and I rolled it from one end to the other. When I got to the end of the piece of felt, I added more hot glue to secure it in place. After my hot glue had set up for a few seconds, I grabbed the piece out of the center and I started twisting and pulling it up through and it created a cone shaped stem. I added hot glue to the inside of the two frames and I placed the stem inside. Then I got to work decorating the front of the pumpkin. I, Since this pumpkin's a little bit bigger, I decided to get out some of the bigger leaves and greenery that I had. I laid them over the front and I also tucked a few into the top of the frame around the stem to blend everything together. I created a simple bow for the front by cutting two pieces of burlap ribbon that were the same length. I folded them in ha half and I cut from the outside towards the center to dovetail both of the ends. Once they were all cut, I laid them in an X pattern and I cinched them together and tied them in the center with a piece of jute. I also decided to wrap a few pieces of this berry garland around my bow and I wrapped it around a pencil to create those cute little corkscrews. I hot glued the bow to the top of the pumpkin and I grabbed a pack of these fairy lights that you can find at the Dollar Tree. I started by adding them into the bottom of the pumpkin and I used my pencil if I needed to to help pull them up through to the top and I made sure that I left the battery pack out on the bottom and stuck it towards the back of the pumpkin so you couldn't see it once it was all lit. I remember making paper bag pumpkins when I was a kid and I thought it would be a fun idea to see if I could do the same thing but make it look a little more high end. I grabbed a pack of the paper bags that they have in the paper section of the Dollar Tree. I started by taking one out and I started crumpling it and wrinkling it up really really good because I wanted to add more texture to the paper and it also makes it a little easier to work once you start breaking down the fibers of that paper bag. After I had it wrinkled how I liked it, then I just started stuffing it with some grocery bags and some more paper bags that I had crinkled to give it a good shape. After I had the bag stuffed as full as I liked it, I took a piece of jute twine and I tied it towards the top. I left a good bit of the excess of the paper bag sticking out of the jute twine because that's going to act as my stem. Once I had the jute twine in place, then I just started twisting and twisting and twisting on that excess and I gave it a little curl so it would look like a pumpkin stem. I didn't like how the corners were sticking out on the bottom of the pumpkin, so I just added a small dot of hot glue, folded the corner over and stuck it in place to give it more of a rounded shape. Next, I started layering on some different paint colors. I started with some white chalk paint and I dry brushed it over the outside of the pumpkin, which really started bringing out that texture from folding it before I stuffed it. Now, of course, if you like the more traditional colors of fall, you could paint this orange, or if you wanna go a little more snazzy, you could paint it a fun color like a bright teal. I think that would look cute too. After I had put some of the white paint on all over, then I went back through with a light green color, added some of that in, and then I went back over with the white again just to mute at that green. The stem I kept simple and I just added some dark brown paint over top of the already brown of the paper bag. That way you could see kind of both tones of the brown paper bag and the dark brown paint. To decorate mine, I took some of this black and white striped ribbon that I had in my stash. I cut one piece, folded it over on itself to form a loop, and I added a second piece to act as the tails. I tied it in place with some jute string. Now, like I said before, I'm trying to make this look more high end, something that I could actually keep out in my house that I would enjoy. But I do remember making this as a kid, and I really had a good time. And I think when we made them, because we made them in school, I think we turned ours into jack o' lanterns. So if you do, have little ones if you have kids or grandkids or nieces and nephews I think this would be a fun project that you could all do together they could paint their pumpkin with some cute faces let them go to town decorating it how they like and you could do the same or you could try to make yours look a little more high-end like mine 
Now after I had the bow in place, then of course I added in some greenery because I'm always happy to use up some of that greenery that I've been collecting over the years like I showed you in the beginning. I have that giant bag that just seems to never end. And to use up even more of that greenery, I decided to go ahead and put a few pieces on the back side as well. Thanks for coming to hang out with me today. You'll have to let me know in the comments which pumpkin was your favorite and also let me know if you're gonna try to make any of them for yourself. I hope you have a great week. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.